Wow. Wow. Bradford Northern on their last two league visits here have been unsuccessful. Wakefield Trinity the victors in the first encounter and the second encounter being 30 points to 16 in the Trinity's favour. We can also remember that these two sides met here at Bellevue in the Challenge Cup last season when Bradford were the victors 20 points to 18 with a very hotly disputed try by Neil Summers. Both sides have got to forget about that then today and get on with the business of the league. And the two teams then, starting with Wakefield Trinity at fullback Gary Spencer, two Andy Raw, three Andy Mason, four Richard Goddard, five Andy Wilson, six Lee Hanlon, seven and captain is Jeff Bagnell. The forwards then, eight Ian Marlowe, nine Nigel Bell. He takes his place at hooker this afternoon because of the injury sustained at Lee to Billy Conway. At ten is Hugh Waddell, eleven Dave Woods, twelve Mike Forshaw. 13, Matthew Fuller, and substitutes for Trinity this afternoon, Adrian Flynn at 14, and Paul Round at 15. Bradford Northern then, in a very unusual strip to me, at 1, Dave Watson, 2, Steve McGowan, 3, Daryl Shelford, 4, Paul Newlove, 5, Brimmer Kebby, 6, Neil Summers, 7, and captain Derek Fox. The forwards then, 8, Roy Powell, 9, Trevor Clark, 10, John Hamer, 11, Paul Dixon, 12, Carl Fairbank, 13, Dave Heron, and the substitutes for Bradford this afternoon, 14, Roger Simpson, and 15, Carl Winterburn, who was just signed from a local amateur club in Birkenshaw, and he takes his place on the subs bench this afternoon, injuries to Paul Medley for that reason. With me in the commentary position is Malcolm Lane, he'll be giving some summaries of the match. We've also got a match official of Mr Ollerton. Malcolm, obviously two sides who uh, fought very hard in the cup duel last season, 20 points to 18, Bradford were the victors. Do you think both sides will forget about that and get on with the league business today? I think they've got to do, because one of the things about Bradford this season, we, we've been called the team that's come back from the dead. It's happened twice in our last two league games at Oldham and against Sheffield last Sunday at Oxford. Carl Fairbank back in the side today, been out for a month, so Carl will put a bit of pep into the second row, but the main thing Bradford have got to do is keep the tackling up this afternoon, and this is where they've been lax this last fortnight. Thanks very much, Malcolm. Wakefield Trinity have played in spells as well. Remember Warrington, remember Wigan. First half performances were ex exceptional, and the second half performance were a bit dour, so let's look forward to an entertaining game. Goddard then kicks out on the full. And that's a penalty to Bradford Northern in the very first seconds of this first half. Very strong win today, Malcolm. Yeah, it seems to be coming down the ground there, and obviously that kick-off just misjudging it, and Carl Fairbank there, ready to take the ball, but I think Dave Watson shouted him, leave it alone. Dave saw that the ball was going out, so that's a tap to Bradford on the halfway as Roy Powell takes that first driver for Bradford. Thanks very much, Malcolm. Then Trevor Clark in, acting half-back. And that's Paul Dixon on the charge, the signing from Leeds. Derek Fox, the instigator of many moves for Bradford to Heron to Summers. On the charge was Shelford. And Mr Ollerton there on hand to see that the ball went forward. The first scrum down of the half then. Wakefield Trinity to feed. Miss Bagnell then. Puts it into the second row, but the scrum halves get away with it these days as Andy Wilson drives then into the heart of the Bradford defence. Centre field, some 10 metres from halfway, and that's Fuller. With Nigel Bell in his testimonial season. 
Passing on to you, Waddell. Another very experienced prop forward, but he's taken to ground by Dave Heron. And this is Marlow, the big lad from Hull, but no yardage made from Wakefield Trinity, really. And Bagnall then darting at the Bradford cover. Hanlon takes the ball on the switch move. He's gone across field and ankle tap by Fairbank and brought to ground, so it's kick time. Bagnall then in at first man, a little stutter, but the ball goes over the back. Of Brimmer Kebby, and for my money, the ball bounced as it went into touch, but that's not how the touch judge felt that it went, and it was a turnover. And Powell then to Clark, and a switch move to Dixon. Coming straight down centre field, Bradford always very strong in the forwards. It's a trademark of Peter Fox, he likes a big pack, and that's Summers then. But Fuller, this Australian from South East, took him copybook style by the legs. But Hamer charges from acting half back. And he's 12 metres inside the Wakefield Trinity half. It's Clark to Fox and a quick pass to Heron. Little step inside, but no support. Couldn't get the ball away. Fifth time for Brad, fifth tackle for Bradford then. Fox, little reverse kick that he's famous for, started life off at Featherston, did that little move, and Spencer's the man who brings the ball away for Trinity. Bit of a trademark for Derek Fox, that little reverse kick, Malcolm. Yeah, and of course, Paul New live um, in the Bradford side now, and if you look, knew he was the guy that was up there then, ready, uh, ready for any mistake there by Gary Spencer to pounce on that ball. Yes, that's right. Uh, tactics from Featherston then, both players now with Bradford and bringing that tactic here with them the ball somehow managed to squeeze out in the tackle I presume that held had been shouted Bradford get the feed and the head at that scrum Watson then drops off New Love very very strong this guy New Love it's Clark then in an acting half back Mr Rollett and telling the Wakefield Trinity players to get back the regulation 10 very difficult from play the ball Dixon then gets the ball out to Kebby who's very very quick passes inside and it's Fox on the support superb try from Bradford Malcolm just run us through that try for us will you well I think it all started there with Dave Heron switching the play Wakefield tended to come out Dave, Dave Heron switching the ball but Carl Fairbank there again did very very well with with Brian McKebby and uh, Derek Fox on hand good supporting play and uh, we played what some five minutes into the game and, uh, and Bradford with the first try but Wakefield Trinity got to try and get back into the game as Hanlon this time restarts and that's off the knee of Fairbank and Nigel Bells down onto that very very quickly and very very bravely he went down onto the ball and Fairbank was there fair flying for that ball little penalty there given to Wakefield Trinity Heron was pulling the man back as he tried to get to the ball but that's a very strong tackle on Waddell Again offside from the Bradford Northern defence, Mr Ollerton standing at the play of the ball. Very difficult to mark the regulation 10 for the Bradford lads. So a penalty given, it's Richard Goddard who's been entrusted with the goal kicking duties this afternoon with the absence of Billy Conway through injury. Very difficult for players. To, to sort of get back 10 metres when the referee's not giving him the mark, Malcolm. Yeah, I think that all stemmed, though, from, from Carl Fairbank and, and Dave Heron, it was, that, that was in an offside position, wasn't 10 yards, when the, um, was it the Wakefield, Wakefield hooker that got the ball there, and then Wakefield played the ball very, very quickly, and um, obviously Ian Allerton very, very keen on both the offside, and as we saw in the first, first opening minute, that forward pass. That's right, Malcolm, so Richard Goddard had a chance to reduce the arrears then. He is successful, four points to two, so we have early points on the board in the early stages of the first half, four points to two to Bradford, I feel personally that the touch judges should be more involved around the play ball area and give the referee a chance to make the mark for the defenders to get back to, however Derek Fox will restart for Bradford. The ball's very, very high and it's hanging in the wind as Bagnell takes. And he passes on to Woods, made a big impression this lad, Woods, from Canberra Raiders. Gary Spencer helping his forwards out, a jinking run, comes back inside and almost beats the cover, but the very experienced figure of Dave Heron there to pull him down. 
Nigel Bell then as we say in his testimonial season he's been a stalwart to the Wakefield Trinity Club and well deserves his testimonial then as Woods charges again and Clark and Hamer are the men to pull him down as Hanlon receives the ball at first man and tries to kick downtown the ball hangs in the air Watson's got the ball very dangerous player this in broken play but Bagnell an exceptional tackle Gets the ball out to Steve McGowan, but no yardage made. And Watson then in at acting half-back. Summers is the man with the ball. He has a tilt at the Wakefield defence. And Woods it is that goes high. Smothered the man and the ball, but to the higher region of the body. And uh, that's stamped out straight away by Mr Ollerton Malcolm. Yeah, Neil, Neil Summers is one of these players that uh, he likes to take the forwards on. He's a, he's a good, strong-running standoff. I can envisage probably sometime in his career that um, Neil will probably end up in, in the pack as a hooker but uh, Ian Alton very very quickly there to spot that high tackle and obviously the penalty to Bradford Neil won't be quite happy with that comment about shoving him in the pack there Malcolm I'm sure Hamer it is then that takes the ball 10 metres in from touch and 10 metres into the Wakefield half Dixon charges in Clark's at acting half back to Fox, to Heron, this seems to be the pattern, a little run around. Watson with the ball, drops off Fairbank, they're keeping the ball moving. Powell then, centre field, Powell gets the ball away, Clark's in support. Good into passing by the Bradford forwards there. Fox it is then this time that uh, gets into the position of acting half-back and it's Powell then who drives towards the Wakefield defence. It's Heron who manages to get the ball away and this is Summers. Summers gets the ball away to Watson. Watson goes back on a diagonal run, gets the ball away to Hamer. Hamer takes the defence on, and he's brought to ground three metres outside of the Wakefield 22. Hanlon and Waddell were the tacklers. Watson then to Fairbank. Fairbank gets the ball back to Watson. Entertaining stuff, a good underarm pass there. But it was Darrell Shelford who put the ball on the deck. The ball going in a forward direction, as Mr Ollerton indicates, and that'll be a head and feed to Wakefield Trinity. Some lovely intricate interpassing there by the Bradford forwards, Malcolm. Yeah, and if you notice, Dave Watson's gone to stand off half. Neil Summers dropped back to fullback. This has been a ploy that uh, Peter Fox has been doing, and uh, Wakefield coming away now. This is good play by... Yes, and that's Hanlon then. Hanlon passes, and that's Andy Raw, and he's quite quick. He's Andy Raw, and he's got some strength. But superb cover tackle by Brimmer Kebby there, who's also got exceptional pace. Matthew Fuller then on to Bagnell. Spencer's got the ball. Forshaw, the lad from Wigan, charges that underneath the post, 10 metres out. Nigel Bell in acting half back. Good pressure from Wakefield. Marlowe's the guy who brings the ball across to our commentary position, 10 metres in from touch. Holding down in the tackle, says Mr. Ollerton. It's the first enterprising move of the game for Wakefield Trinity. Bagnell passes the ball quickly, tries to catch Brackford. Unawares there, but he's tackled a metre short. Bell then having a tilt at the line. The Wakefield Trinity crowd shouting and balling there. Trinity lacking ideas in this 10 metre area. Goddard then with the ball to Hanlon. Fuller, four shores on his support. He gets the ball away. I'm sure that was deemed to go forward, but a Bradford man's taking the possession. So he's let the game flow, Mr Ollerton, rather than bring the game back for the scrum down. It's Watson then. He passes on to Dixon, but he's crunch tackled by Andy Mason and Hugh Waddell as Trevor Clark brings the ball away from acting half-back and Fox just pushing a couple of the Wakefield lads off the man there, trying to get the ball played a bit quicker as Roy Powell then just brings it a metre outside of his 22. It looks as if... Yes, it uh, almost looked as if Bradford were going to settle for a, a downtown kick there, but... Two of the Wakefield Trinity players were holding Roy Powell down in the tackle and from the resulting penalty, Derek Fox kicks for touch and relieves pressure for Bradford. A, a good spell by Wakefield there, Malcolm. Yeah, super it. I mean, end-to-end -end stuff. Brimmer Kebby getting back very, very well there um, on, on his opposing winger. But um, Bradford a little bit lucky, but I know both Nigel, uh, Nigel Stevenson and Peter Fox have worked on this defence this week. And uh, Bradford looking a lot sharper and coming away now with Neil Summers, but Summers well wrapped up there. So Bradford up to the halfway line and Dave Watson at the acting half-back. Difficult man, gets a good ball out to Fairbank. Trevor Clark in support. 
So once again, Bradford keeping that ball moving, but David, I think we've got a cracking game here in Prospect this afternoon. I can't argue with that, Malcolm. It's absolutely superb game so far. Four points to two. Heron jinking and weaving, tries to look for the inside support. It wasn't there. The ball went to ground, but Trevor Clark was the man to pick it up. Watson inside to Fox, Fox to Powell. Again, this little short interpassing movements by Bradford, causing Wakefield Trinity a lot of problems. Derek Fox then opts for the one point. Took his time, he was under no pressure. And the little man just eases Bradford a little bit further in front. Five points to two now, with some 14 minutes of the first half gone. Bradford seemed to be using these short little passes to the forwards and working down the centre of the field, Malcolm. Yeah, I think this is one thing that, that, that obviously they've been working on, both in the close season and, and the opening parts of the season. But as it's happening this afternoon, the ball's sticking. The last couple of matches, we've seen a lot of these passes going to ground. But uh, Carl Fairbank, ple pleased with the way that Carl's come back into the side after a month. Um, yeah, the main thing is, let's hope that Carl just paces himself and doesn't burn himself out. Yes, it's very difficult to come back from injury. Obviously, people can be very fit, but being match fit is another dif is a different thing altogether. Bradford then trying to make inroads into the Wakefield Trinity defence from out of there on 22 with Heron there making good yardage as Hamer drives onto the ball. Very underrated prop, John Hamer. Fox at first man then passes on. Watson it is who sees the Trinity man come in, just sidestep round Fuller, and Dixon it is that's brought to ground some five metres inside their own half. It was Woods, the Canberra Raiders pro, uh, second row forward who brought him down. Dixon again with the backflip pass there, put Steve McGowan under tremendous pressure and it was Matthew Fuller who came up with the ball and Goddard then just settles things down for Wakefield as Andy Wilson goes in at acting halfback, Bagnell then with the ball. Little dummy move by Woods, gives the ball out to Spencer, Spencer drops Mason off, tremendous pace Mason. But Paul Newlove, his opposite number, puts him to ground. Wakefield Trinity through Bagnell to Hanlon. Hanlon uses Bagnell as a foil. Gets Andy Rohr into the action, who kicks forward. Will the wind take it dead? And it has. Very strong wind, as we witnessed from the very first kick of the game when Goddard put the ball out on the full. Andy Rohr just put a little bit too much beef behind that, and the ball just skittled over the dead ball line. And the restart will be by Trevor Clark on the, on the Bradford 22. It's Summers then who comes away. Shelford he brings into the action. Shelford well tackled by Woods, getting through a lot of work in these early stages is Woods. And that's Hamer charging down the centre of the ground. Fox in at first man. Drops Fairbank off, uses Powell as the foil. Strong run by Fairbank, gets the ball inside to Watson, very strong. Bagnell just gets the hand in there, knocks the ball to ground. Mr Ollerton looks over at the touch judge and neither the touch judge or Mr Ollerton saw that Bagnell's hand did touch the ball. So Bradford Northern have not got the tackle uh, back to one there. Wakefield Trinity quite fortunate in this instance as New Love sets off on a run. And it takes four Wakefield Trinity players to bring him to ground. Exceptionally strong, exceptionally quick. You can't give him a lot of room as Fox puts the high ball up in the air. Spencer then, the man to go up with Powell, but Powell's the victor of that movement. And he knocks on as he takes the ball. Exceptional follow-up by Roy Powell there, Malcolm. Yeah, Roy, Roy seemed to have a, a new lease of life since he came from Leeds. I think Peter Fox allowing him to game and play his own game. And, uh, and Roy totally enjoying himself and move up into the front row because of the injury to, to David Hobbs but um, yeah he's enjoying his football is Roy and uh, scoring tries that's all you can ask for a number eight that's to do his his job at tackling and score some tries Peter Fox will be pleased with that as I'm sure David Topless will be pleased with that run out of defense from Nigel Bell there Nigel uh, can play in almost any position loose forward scrum half hooker you name it for sure then gets Hanlon on the break Hanlon a bit of a Bit of a bad pass, but manages to get his foot to the ball, and Andy Raw comes in off the wing and takes, and he's tackled centre field, eight metres inside his own half, an injury then sustained to Nigel Bell, just out of camera shot. Matthew Fuller was the man who tried to take the inside ball from Woods and knocked on. Woods complaining to the referee that Fuller was held back. Mr Ollerton says, I'm refereeing the game, and I've given the scrum down. And the head and feed will be to Bradford, but Wakefield Trinity at the moment 
just short of their number nine who was receiving treatment Nigel Bell with that exceptional break from his own 22 there just took a knock in the Bradford tackle looks as if he's got a knock under the chest area just the wind knocked out of him a little bit just going back to Bradford's form according to uh, a little conversation that we had before the game Malcolm uh, Bradford had a 15 minute spell a peach of a spell really and that's where all the points were scored against Sheffield and that's how they got the victory last week yeah it's happened in the last two matches at Oldham Dave Watson saved us a game with a, a try in the dying minutes when, when we looked well beaten um, Sheffield Good performance by Sheffield last week, with 16 points up within the first 15 minutes, but Bradford came back and, and came back well, so total commitment by the Bradford players. And uh, as I say, looking at the team today, they're coming up a lot quicker, so obviously they've worked on that defence, Nigel Stevenson and Peter Fox, and Dave Heron there, he's enjoying his football at the moment, Dave in, in amongst everything, switching the ball, and he's got the players now to run on to him. That's what it's all about as a, as a footballer and a ball handler. It's nice to have the runners, it makes your game a lot easier. But here we go then. Fairbank trying to flick the ball inside and passes like that uh, are not wise for youngsters to have a look at. It should be two hands on the ball at all times and always look at the target area. Fairbank there guilty of losing possession for his side as Nigel Bell then comes in at acting half back and passes on to Bagnell and Woods on the charge, the little drop off move, centre field, 20 minutes gone in this first half, Bradford Northern 5, Wakefield Trinity 2 Spencer then in at acting half back, Woodell comes on the charge, takes a little bit longer than normal to play, I feel that Nigel Bell is still carrying the injury from the little knock that he got earlier, the bench will probably be keeping an eye on him, it looks as if Paul Round is Warming up as the little kick from Hanlon is well fielded by Brimmer Kebby who looks to have a lot of pace. Fox it is who passes on to Watson, exceptional strength for a small guy who passes on to a guy that's got exceptional strength and he's a big man. As Fox goes back inside and jinks and weaves and turns and looks for support but it's not there. As Watson's in it acting half back 10 metres from the Trinity line, 5 metres from the left hand side of the post. And New Love there comes in on the charge. He's used quite often his pace and his strength a couple of metres from the line as Fox then gets Powell almost over, but the sixth tackle given. Wakefield Trinity then come away unscathed. The score still remains five points to two, and it's Andy Raw coming in off the wing to relieve the pressure of his forwards. And Marlow now a good drive out almost reaching the 22 on the second tackle as Waddell is used as the foil and Bagnell goes on a jinking run and he's brought to ground and it does look as if Nigel Bell is going to carry on for a short while anyway he's going to try and run this little niggling injury that he's got as the inside ball goes to Marlow Marlow looking for support gets rid of the ball in the tackle but to a Bradford player and Shelford there drops onto the ball with Summers and Fox combining to send Fairbank away who's looking for support and he gets support from Watson and Watson the inside ball to Fox and Fox goes to ground about three or four metres just outside of the Wakefield Trinity 22 and it's still this short interpassing movements by the Bradford forwards that are causing the Wakefield Trinity defence a lot of bother this afternoon Fairbank then to Powell Powell just two metres inside the Wakefield 22 with Clark acting half-back. What will Fox do this time? He passes on to Heron, he's got support from Watson, he misses him out. Heron gives Dixon the ball, who flicks it up. But in an attempt to get the ball away, he loses the ball in the tackle and that relieves the pressure for Wakefield, Malcolm. Yeah, I think what happened there, Dave Heron was, was obviously looking for the runners coming, but as the, um, the Wakefield scrum half there, seemed to pull the ball down just as he was passing it so the ball popping forward and uh, referee there giving um, a penalty to Wakefield it could have been for something that David Heron says although uh, we're not quite sure we're a good 50 metres away from play and we don't hear things that go off but that's a good clearing kick from Hanlon then and the game will restart as the injury to Nigel Bell looks to have subsided and he takes the ball forward and just breaks over the halfway line as Bagnell goes into acting half-back. Spencer's the foil and Marlow's the runner. 
but Marlowe's brought to ground by Dave Heron and Carl Fairbank. Heron getting through a lot of work, both in attack and defence, as Forshaw strides towards the defence, but Heron, that man, he's there again. Fuller it is who goes, passes the ball on to Waddell and he drives forward. You Waddell, 34 years old, he's on loan from Sheffield Eagles as Bagnell darts towards the Bradford cover. Wilson's the man who loses the ball, but Marlowe's the man who drops on it and rescues the situation for Wakefield. As Wilson then passes the ball on to Hanlon, and Hanlon puts the ball high up in the air, but the wind again is the victor, and that pushes the ball over the in-goal area on the full. And Bradford come away from their own 22, a little tap by Fairbank to himself, and he's tackled the Bradford faithful there. Just shouting for a little bit more support for Fairbank as Dixon breaks the first line of defence but couldn't quite get away from the defensive tackle of Forshaw. Hamer then on halfway, passes to Fox. Fox looks for Watson as the runner. Inside ball to Summers. Summers goes, Summers goes round Spencer but he's tackled copybook style. And as Summers was going down in the tackle, he passed the ball and it went forward, so had a Bradford man have picked that up, Malcolm, it just wouldn't have been a try, the ball went forward quite clearly. Yeah, from the referee's decision there, you know, he's come back to that first knock-on, as Summers, I think he's given a forward pass there, Summers trying to get the ball out. Neil's quite quick, he, he scored some good tries this season, and just good, good tackle there by the uh, Wakefield defence that uh, stopped a certain try for Neil Summers. That's right, Spencer on hand there, he's... Uh, Lost a little bit of weight this season, been on the weights, been on a good diet programme and he's got some of the pace back and he was able then to catch Summers who was very quick himself, tackled him by the ankles, Summers went straight to ground and couldn't quite get the ball to the man in support. Wakefield Trinity got the ball out from the resulting scrum and Forshaw puts Mason away. Mason puts the ball back inside to Andy Raw, who's seen quite a lot of, lot of the ball in this early stages of the first half. Nigel Bell acting half. Hanlon then jinks back inside. No room for him there as Dixon and Hamer combine to bring him to ground and Woods, the long ball to Goddard and Goddard just shimmied a little bit there and for a, just a little second I thought he'd gone round Shelford but just unable to do so. It's Fuller then, he puts the ball low and hard but he doesn't get the direction and it's gone straight over the dead ball. So four kicks from Wakefield Trinity in the first half and nobody's quite managed to master the strength of the wind. No, I mean, from our commentary position here, you can really see the uh, the flags blowing down that ground and Dave Watson did well then to uh, get out of the way of that ball and uh, just allow the ball to go dead. So it's Bradford now need to bring this ball out again and get back into the Wakefield half with 25 minutes gone on the clock. So um, let's see what they can do in this next quarter of an hour up to half time. Suspected forward pass by the winner Wakefield Trinity contingent below me. Mr. Ollerton then again around the acting half back area, not giving the mark for the Trinity defenders to get back to the Shelford. Drives in. We're on the sixth and last tackle. Trevor Clark will pass on to Derek Fox. And Derek Fox will use the little grubber kick downfield. But Gary Spencer's there to pick the ball up and jinx round Roy Powell, but. Roy Powell recovers and puts Spencer to ground as Bagnell then runs off, shoves off Roy Powell. That's an indication of the little man's strength there. Just takes some doing to push a lad off the size of Roy Powell. Forshaw then drives at Dixon, who tackles him straight round the midriff area, pulls him to ground. Marlow the charge. But Fairbank, Powell and Dixon combine to bring him down as Fuller then, direction's a little bit better, but straight into McGowan's arms, and he's on a diagonal jinking run, and he's brought to ground by Ian Marlow. This prop brought from Hull. Had his first game for Wakefield Trinity against Lee last week, and had an exceptional game. Newlove then took the ball from that little round the man pass by Watson, and Kebby. 10 metres inside the Wakefield Trinity half, the ball to Clark, to Fox, to Heron. Heron tries to get round Marlow, but Marlow brings him to ground. Oh, Powell not half expecting that. Bradford in a bit of a 
disarray at the moment, but the ball goes to Fairbank. Watson's the man in support. He passes through to Clark, who gets the ball away to Fox, but the referee right on hand. Little forward pass. Derek Fox unable to pick that ball up anyway. Head and feed will be to Wakefield, but it's scrappy play, but Bradford seemed to have had the, the pick of the first half, Malcolm. Yeah, I think Carl Fairbank, he, he's, he's the one. It seems to spread to the rest of the team. Carl's always one for turning his back and looking for players coming running. It's spread to the rest of the team. But I think the interesting thing this afternoon has been this first half hour that Bradford have got up to the Wakefield Trinity attackers a lot quicker than what we've seen in the last two weeks. So it's, it, it's caused mistakes on both sides. But yeah, good play by Bradford and Wakefield only that one point, just three points difference and uh, you know, as we come up to that half time but this second half I think will tell with his strong wind and probably Derek Fox use a good kicking game. I'm sure he will as Summers then takes the ball from Derek Fox from that terrible mistake by Richard Goddard. Richard Goddard put his side under a tremendous amount of pressure as Malcolm says five minutes from half time. New Love was the man who uh, almost had that ball grasped out of his hands by Mike Forshaw. Didn't quite manage it though. And Hamer it is that comes charging towards the Trinity Post Breeze, heavily met by Bell and Marlow. Clark uses Fairbank then on the charge. We're on the fifth and last, Mr. Ollerton's indicated that. Will we see another shot by Derek Fox? No, we won't. It's a quick pass back to David Heron who gets Roy Powell away. But Roy Powell drops the ball in the tackle and Mike Forshaw is the man to drop on it for Trinity. So still nothing in the game. Wakefield Trinity 2, Bradford Northern 5. I make it on my watch about three to four minutes to half time. As Woods makes a storming run and takes three Bradford tacklers with him as Bagnell then goes into first man. Wakefield moving a bit wider as Goddard comes on. Paul Round looks at Mr. Ollerton in disgust there as Mr. Ollerton deemed that the ball from Paul Round to Richard Goddard was passed in a forward direction. Giving the head and feet to Bradford, do you think that, uh, as an unbiased opinion, that that ball was forward, Malcolm? No, this is the second time we've had Ian Orlick in this season, and uh, in, in the previous game, um, that he refereed for Bradford. Very, very keen on the forward pass, and of course, it, um, it, it's carrying on where he left off, and uh, OK, um, a straight pass is ruled forward, but um, no, I think he, he does go over the top a little bit sometimes with him. Dave Watson very, very quickly there to get the get the ball back up into the Wakefield 25 again from that uh, from that play of the ball so Norton with Neil Summers now moving the ball out wide New Love New Love stepping inside there but just good tackle on Paul New Love on that far side by Andy Mason as Daddle Shelford in at the sharp end there this is what Bradford do they use the centres a lot to take that first ball up so Derek Fox onto Heron the little run round as Fox shimmies and straightens up and no way through there for the Bradford Northern scrum half. Thanks very much there, Malcolm. Yes, Derek Fox at the hub of everything. And this is another man that is heading a long pass to McGowan. Breaks the first line of the defence, but Richard Goddard it is this time. Who's on hand to take the ball for Wakefield to the team. McGowan just threw the ball. Willy-nilly there, lost possession for his side. Richard Goddard was the man that said thanks very much. And he comes away with the ball at Wakefield to the playing catch-up rugby in their own 22. A little bit risky business to do that. As Wood says, give me the ball, I'll try and power my way out of the 22. Fuller then, his Australian partner, he gives the ball onto Forshaw. Forshaw drives very, very hard and just manages to make it to the 30 metre line. Mr. Ollerton telling Bradford Northern where he wants them. Hanlon's the man who drops off round, who looks for support but unable to get the ball away in the tackle. We're on five, it's kick time. And it's Fuller who's entrusted with the duties. He puts the ball over the head of Watson. The ball then going to go into the in-goal area. And again, the strength of the wind has been misjudged. And Fuller has given Bradford a chance to come back centre field, regroup and come away with a tap on their own 22 metre line. Trevor Clark it is, the man to do it. Summers on to New Love, New Love fairly ambled there into the Wakefield Trinity cover, didn't come with any meaning, any force, and got bundled to the ground. Hamer it is who comes with a little bit more force, he's onto the 30 metre line and it's Powell then. 
Again, driving hard, Bradford, tr Bradford using their forwards to drive at the Trinity defence. Heron it is, who runs across field, jinking, shimmying, showing the ball. Exceptional player, exceptional professional, but had a great spell with Leeds and now he's working wonders for Bradford Northern. Clark it is then, who gets it away to Summers, who's going to put the ball downfield. It's as good as a pass as Gary Spencer, and thanks very much. Straight down his throat, and he runs back at Bradford Northern. Can't get away from Derek Fox, but manages to get the ball to Nigel Bell, who throws a lovely ball out to Andy Wilson. Good vision from the hooker. Andy Wilson comes inside, manages to get the ball away to Goddard. It's exceptional play from Trinity, but superb cover from Daryl Shelford. He takes Goddard down centre field and full it is from acting out back. Who gets Hanlon away? Hanlon passes the ball to Spencer, who's in the line. But a superb diving tackle there by, by Dixon on Spencer, puts him to ground, little inside ball. Woods flicks the ball back, foreshows the man, just goes inside the Bradford 22. Exciting stuff this from Wakefield. We haven't seen a lot of it in this first half. It's been all Bradford. Hanlon then to round, round takes the tackle throws the ball behind Goddard Goddard then well smothered by Summers and we're on the fifth and last and Bagnell goes blind and Wilson is the man taking the ball will the ball bounce kindly for him no Watson takes the possession and comes away he's a very very dangerous runner he's dropped the ball Wakefield Trinity have get six more Paul round then takes it from acting half back runs across the field Hanlon what will Hanlon do he gets the ball to Forshaw Forshaw can't get the ball away, Mason and Raw outside him, unopposed, if the ball goes to Mason it's try time, Hanlon then this time to Mason but there's cover in front, Andy Raw's taken by Brimmer Kebby, so Wakefield Trinity have gone across the field in their allocated tackles and it's Hanlon to Bagnell, Bagnell back inside, good jinking run, what can Hanlon do, takes the, takes the Bradford defence on, Bit of a sloppy one-handed pass. The ball hits a Wakefield Trinity man and goes back to Bradford and they must be relieved. Shelford then gets the ball away and it's scrappy play from both sides and McGowan's there to take the ball. Dear me, it's farcical, it's a comedy of errors at the moment from two professional sides. A lot of one-handed passes which aren't acceptable in this game. Possession is everything and especially when you're on somebody's try line putting them under tremendous amounts of pressure. You've got to score tries. And as the first half comes to a close, Malcolm, tremendous pleasure from Wakefield, but Bradford hold out. Yeah, I, I thought Wakefield were just going to steal one there just before half-time, which obviously is a very, very um, important time to get a try against your opposition. But Bradford weathered the storm. As you said, Dave, it's a little bit of scrappy play there. But, um, OK, Steve McGowan and Daniel Shelford, Managed to get that ball at the second attempt, which I feel sure if that ball had gone to ground, it'd been a certain try for Wakefield. But a scrappy first half, let's see what we've got in store in the second half. Thanks very much, Malcolm. Then just a reminder of the score, Wakefield Trinity 2, Bradford 5. And as the teams go for their drink of tea and the lemons, we'll see you back for the second half. Wakefield down in their own half during this second half and uh, using this strong wind. Yes, I'm sure we will. I thought that Wakefield Trinity would have used the strong wind as well because it's somehow easier to run up the field 70 metres or so than it is to barge your way up the field 70 metres or so. So three tackles gone and Wakefield Trinity have just come at least 30, nearly 40 metres, but that's a terrible pass by Bagnell. Put Hanlon under all sorts of pressure. And Hanlon is tackled by Trevor Clark, and it's Marlow then who's going to drive away. It's a little bit one man rugby from Wakefield Trinity. Ian, Hol Ian Hollerton there, not quite sure. Looked from a, for assistance from his touch judges today. Gave the knock on, and then something said. Something said by the Wakefield Trinity players. Bagnell's just arguing the toss with him as well and he's going to have to be careful because you can quickly get 10 minutes in the bin for that and Bradford opt to go for the 
two points. Malcolm, you know, chatting back at the referee and giving silly penalties away like that, it's unprofessional, isn't it? Well, yeah, definitely in this day and age, and of course now, in the, in the advent of ten minutes in the sin bin, but also, Bagnall could have very, very easy there, given another ten metres up the field, which made that kick land a little bit easier for Derek Fox. But, um, yeah, as, as you say, you know, the man in the middle is doing a job, and, uh, you know, the players should respect this. My sentiments entirely, and... Uh... The descent there by one of the Wakefield Trinity players, we're not quite sure who it was, has given Derek Fox the chance to increase the lead for Bradford. He's pushed the ball wide of the left-hand post, just as Richard Goddard did in the first half. So Derek Fox not been able to master the strength of the wind also. So Hanlon then, he drops out from the 22-metre line, quite evident that the wind is strong, the ball was hanging in the air for what seemed to be ages. Quite lucky to get away with holding down in the tackle as Heron puts Fairbank away. But he's not able to break the cover tackle of Hanlon. And a penalty. Well, I feel that Cal Fair Fairbank was a little unfortunate and I'm sure you do, Malcolm. Yeah, one marker was on the floor there at the side of him and, uh, and nobody in front of him and that, that, that's one of the things that Carl does very, very quickly to make good yardage. But Bagnell a superb run there. So it's good pressure from Wakefield at the moment as Fuller then goes forward, but he's held up in the tackle. Hamer will put him to ground and just buy valuable seconds for his defence to get set as Bell then runs off from acting half-back. Bit negative from Wakefield as Marlow made the early run. Bagnell then using round as the foil and another foil by Spencer and Forshaw passes on to Mason. Mason back to Hanlon. Hanlon's in everything this second half so far. And Wakefield Trinity only eight metres short. Can they turn pressure into points? They need an early score. Bagnell then runs across, gives it to Marlow who stood. Marlow happens to get the ball away to Fuller who passes to round. Round to Mason. Mason's through. Goddard's got the ball. Steps inside. Superb. But it was only to be expected. Superb pressure from Wakefield for the opening few minutes of the second half. Wakefield for the first time take the lead, six points to four. Good quick hands then across the field. Paul Roundstorm threw into a gap. Overhead basketball pass to the supporting Andy Mason and you would have thought with the pace that he's got that he would score the defence. Closed on him very, very quickly. He managed to get the ball away to Richard Goddard who stepped inside the cover and his strength and his size managed to stretch out and score the try. The Bradford defence was stretched, stretched and Wakefield Trinity punished them there. But just going back to Hanlon, he seems to be a superb replacement for Nigel Wright as Goddard then strikes the ball quite crisply. It's hanging in the air, but it's a goal. The two points, quite welcomed by the Wakefield Trinity players and their supporters this afternoon. Good crowd here this afternoon. Probably coming up to the region of 5,000 as McGowan comes off the field and Simpson replaces him. Malcolm seems to think that Roger Simpson will go to fullback. Summers will, Summers will move out. Onto the wing. And Watson will take his position at standoff. And a very deep kick there by Derek Fox, using the strength of the wind as well, has put Wakefield Trinity under pressure. Woods unable to stop that ball from going over the line. Tried to take it on the thigh and take the sting out of it. Came off the top of his leg and went over the in goal area. Bagnell then just saying to his men, Let's get the game underway again through Goddard and let's give it a good hefty thump and let's chase the ball downfield and let's not let Bradford come back at us so quickly after taking the lead now. It's eight points to five in Wakefield's favour but this is the man entrusted with the standoff half duties now. Watson then to Fox and Fairbank will charge at the Wakefield Trinity defence. He's looking for support and it's not there. He has to die with the ball as Clark moves in to act in half-back. And it's Heron then that goes across. He gets the ball away to Watson. Watson's standing start, but he's so strong, this guy. He's so elusive. He makes it very difficult for defences. Clark again acting half-back. Powell using his weight and his strength. 
This seems to be the ploy of Bradford. One man driving, Fox coming for the ball. He gets it, looks for New Love. Just falls on the ground there, it's five tackles. Will Bradford try and score or will they push the ball over the line? New Love then just pushes the ball to ground and it's Spencer that dives on it, so Bradford are now enjoying a great deal of pressure. Put Wakefield under a lot of pressure. Yeah, Derek Fox saw a little bit of a gap there, but Derek just lacking in that little bit of confidence at the moment. Normally, he'd it, it, it have strode through, but just slipped on the turf. But the pressure back on Wakefield again as uh, they've got to drop out underneath the post. That's right, they have, and Hanlon tries to gain as much ground as possible, but it's very difficult against this strong win. But a superb chase by the Wakefield Trinity defenders there. Sees Kebby come back to the 30-metre line and tackled by Forshaw and Mason. But it's Dixon then pushes off Woods, and not many people will do that this season, I can tell you. So Nigel Bell been laid upon by Dixon. And gets it to Hamer, who charges at the 22. And he comes to ground exactly on the 22 as Trevor Clark then orchestrating things from acting half back. Little cross move with Fox. Fox goes back inside and gets the ball back to Watson, who looks for Powell. This is the intricate passing movement that brought Bradford so much success in the first half. Clark then to Heron. Heron runs at the Wakefield defence. Fairbank, Fairbank puts the ball to ground, but Watson it is who picks it up. No support for Watson. Five tackles gone. Fox, what will Fox do? He jinks back inside. That looks like a penalty. It's not a penalty try. But Malcolm, Derek Fox had kicked the ball. He'd gone through. But Jeff Bagnell pulled him down. And for that professional foul has had to take 10 minutes in the bin. Yeah, well, as we said a little bit earlier on, some of the players just trying to flout the laws a little bit. It's nice to see the referee stamping down on this. Derek Fox, yeah, he, he, we were on the last tackle there, looked to chip the ball through, and Bagnall, silly really, for, for, for taking the man out. I don't, I don't think Derek could have got to that ball, probably the wind had taken it dead, but a chance for Fox now to uh, pull Bradford back within one point of, uh, of Wakefield. Yes, and it's a fairly easy shot, bearing in mind that the conditions are quite terrible for goal kickers this afternoon. I feel in my own mind, Malcolm, that Derek Fox would not have reached that ball before the defence. However, the two points have been taken with open arms by Bradford. They're just one point adrift now. Wakefield Trinity 8, Bradford Northern 7. Wakefield Trinity in no hurry to get the game underway as Bagnell's sitting the 10 minutes out in the bin. He's obviously going to put his side under a lot of pressure. He's the fulcrum point of the Wakefield Trinity attack in lots of ways. And that'll be left to Hanlon now to take over his duties. So Wakefield Trinity a man down. We have to work very, very hard as Bradford comes storming out of there, 22. Dixon, the man there, who came, and Powell, he had another shot, and it's Clark from acting halfback. It's the first time Clark's actually made a dart from acting halfback in the whole of this game, and Watson and Fox combined to send Heron and Simpson. Simpson coming looking from, for work from the full-back slot. Clark it is who will pass on to Fox, who will put the ball downfield, but Fox has angled the ball towards the touchline side. Excellent kick, judged the win to perfection. As Wilson there, very elusive, very dangerous in block, broken play, Andy Wilson. Spencer then relieving his forwards and taking the drive away, comes towards the 22 line now with Marlow charging at the defence, but Fairbank had an exceptional game so far in defence, Fairbank. As Woods charges, but the other man, Heron, also done an exceptional tackling stint. He brings him to ground, Forshaw then breaks clear. Mason, oh, superb tackle. David Heron, for me, so far the pick of the Bradford Northern forwards. As Fuller takes his time and puts the ball downfield, Simpson's going to have to run towards that, but opts to leave it for Fox. Fox very lethargic in his approach to that ball, Malcolm. 
Fuller made uh, full use of that and came in and made the tackle strongly. I'd have thought Derek could have been better there, offloading that ball for Roger Simpson, who's a very, very strong runner. Um, comes up well from full-back and um, lucky to get away with that. Yes, it was Fox who took it, but managed to get to ground and settle things down for his side. As they're exactly in centre field now, and Watson it is that's moved up to stand off half, and he's getting more involved around the first man area. But Clark it is that pushes him out of the way this time, and he will feed Fox, who will feed Fairbank, who will drive at the Wakefield defence, but he's brought to ground by Nigel Bell. And New Loving at acting half back. Now Fox will put the ball high up in the air. It's superb, it's hanging. Fox will chase, but Spencer equal to it and manages to catch the ball and offloads superbly there to Andy Mason. Fox chased his kick up well. But Spencer wasn't wasn't deterred by Fox's run. Took the ball in excellent style. And it's Paul Round then who gets Andy Wilson away, who comes back inside. Throws the ball inside to Richard Goddard. Richard Goddard running across the field. A shoulder charge by Fairbank. Put Goddard back in his tracks, but didn't knock him over. It's Forshaw then. Gets the ball away to Andy Rohr, who takes on his opposite number, but just manages to stay a couple of inches away from touch. There's Hanlon then. Tries to cheekily slip down the blind side, but Bradford Northern having none of that, and Forshaw puts the left foot to boot. Just doesn't manage to find touch, and Simpson it is then that brings the ball away, running across field, now straightening up. But Woods and Bell make the tackle. The game starting to get some excitement behind it as the mistakes start to go away and some inter intricate passing takes its place, some enjoyable football being seen here at Bellevue. Watson then to Hamer, Hamer charges forward, but no yardage made, strong tackle by Bell and Woods again, combining well these two. Watson it is that takes the ball, little sidestep inside, gets the ball away to Clark. Clark then, quick play the ball, Powell, Heron drops in, Looks for the inside pass to New Love. New Love very strong. Not seen much of Paul New Love this afternoon so far, but Kebby then a chance to show his paces. He runs at the Wakefield line, gets the ball to Fairbank. Superb cover tackle, but superb play by Bradford Malcolm coming from inside their own half and been pulled agonisingly short of the Wakefield Trinity line. Yeah, I think Brimmer Ke Brimmer Kebby did very, very well there. And Carl Fairbank up in support. And Fairbank just probably a little bit short of match fitness normally. Carl had a strode in there, but and he's down injured, so it looks like uh, a little bit of treatment there for Carl Fairbank. Wakefield coming away again now, and uh, yeah, Bradford need to keep the pressure on Wakefield in this second half. That's right, they're a point down at the moment. Eight points to seven for the Dreadnoughts then, as Mason gets the ball to Hanlon, gives it to Woods, he's got support from Forshaw, misses Forshaw out, long ball to Andy Wilson, who jinx and jeeves and somehow manages to find his way and keep himself out of touch and Fuller it was who put the ball high up in the air and he chases the ball. Well taken by Trevor Clark. And Watson who brings it away, he's getting more involved in the game. Is Watson who gives Kebby a chance. Can Kebby run? Rev is quite superb tackle. Superb tackle from Hanlon there. Malcolm, you were saying earlier that this lad Hanlon has been a superb replacement so far for Nigel Wright. And what a superb tackle that was on Kebby because he's a very, very, very quick lad. Yeah, Hanlon did well there to get across to Kebby. I mean, Ke Kebby's got a nice nice turn of speed, but yeah, I like the look of this, uh, this standoff, this Lee Hanlon. Lee Hanlon and uh, yeah, Kebby probably should have maybe just stepped inside there, but down we go to scrum and um, the pressure off of, um, off of Wakefield again, head and ball. Yes, and it's Fuller who puts the ball in this time. He's, uh, he came over from Souths with a standoff, loose forward tag fixed to his bag. And he's having to put the ball in because of the absence of Jeff Bagnell. And it's evident that Wakefield are down to 12 men. Bradford Northern 
spreading the ball quite wide to the wings and trying to make the one-man advantage pay, but it's Fuller then to Forshaw, who's come more into the game in the second half. Spencer in support, Fuller now to Mason. Can Mason do anything? And no, because I'll tell you why, that man Dave Hurren's there again. He's made some absolutely tremendous tackles this, this afternoon so far. Woods tries to get the ball away and playing catch-up rugby. And somehow Mr. Ollerton manages to wave the tackle count back to zero. Paul Round it is, who brings the ball back to Nigel Bell. Nigel Bell tries to get through. Some desperate tackling now by Bradford Northern. As Forshaw is in at acting halfback. He's going to have a tilt on his own, but made no yard is there. But some superb passes by Forshaw in the early stages of the second half. I've got the Wakefield three quarters moving. And it's Marlow then going to try and use his strength and his size, but he'll not get anywhere against the Bradford pack making runs like that as Bagnell comes back onto the field. He's had his 10 minutes in the bin. That's a long pass to Andy Raw. Can Andy Raw get round Kebby? And the answer's no. Kebby brings him to ground with the assistance of Newell, but it's fast and it's furious here at Bellevue. And Bagnell then takes his place at first man. Hanlon gets the ball away, and that's an interception by Shelford. So that's the only thing, really, that Lee Hanlon's done wrong this afternoon. A pass that went to ground and picked up by Shelford. And I'm sure it was a very welcome pick-up because Bradford was sustaining a great deal of pressure there. Malcolm? Yeah, just, just a bad mistake there by Hanlon. But uh, Daddle Shelford just slipping there as that, that ball bobbled about on the on the turf. So Bradford need now to work this ball back into the, uh, into the Wakefield half and probably get back into some of that neat interpassing that they did in the first half and put Wakefield under a lot of pressure as Watson then uses New Love as a dummy runner. Couldn't manage to get the ball away either and he was wise to keep hold of it as the Wakefield Trinity cover swarmed around him and Fox it is then who's going to use the wind. And he's not got the direction either and the ball's gone straight into the in-goal area and across into the dead ball zone so Hanlon will wait until his side come back behind the ball before the ball's tapped and it'll be Nigel Bell who taps the ball gets the game underway again Paul Round just manages to get away from Roy Powell but Roy Powell just did enough to bring the man down onto the ground Marlow, strong run but Heron's in the tackle again he's been everywhere where the defence is concerned today, David Heron. So far, my pick of the Bradford forwards. Bagnell then unleashes a pass to Forshaw, who steps inside. Just couldn't quite get away from the Bradford cover. And it's Woods, not building up ahead of steam, but manages to get the ball away to Wilson. Wilson, jinking run, Goddard, inside pass, seen a small gap, went for it. But three Bradford players just get round him as Bell, oh, yes, Fuller it was, who thought the ball was not for him, Bagnell rather stupidly there just touched the ball forward, and I would have thought that that should have been given as offside and a penalty to Bradford, however, Mr Ollerton's given the turnover, Malcolm, so that's another bad decision. Yeah, the, the referee there, it, it was quite plainly, as, uh, as the pass came out, it hit the forwards knee and Bagnall was in an offside position there, picking that ball up. As you say, it should have been a penalty, but Paul Dixon now driving the ball up this side and on the far side there, it looks like Carl Winterburn going to get his first taste of First Division Rugby League. As Derek Fox just bobbing and weaving and nobody there really coming at Derek. No, that's right, and uh, if Carl Winterburn gets his chance, the Birkenshaw club will be proud of that, bringing through a professional who's taken his line-up in the Bradford first team. But Bradford then come forward towards the Wakefield Trinity line. The Bradford faithful have been following them. Malcolm there at the side of me, a little bit disgusted at Watson trying to get the ball away to Powell. The pass was never on in my view, and I'm sure it was never on in Malcolm's view either. But Wakefield Trinity will say thanks very much for that. And they fall onto the ball and throw Fuller. They bring the ball away, and they'll clear their own line as much as possible for the five tackles, and I'm sure that you'll see the kick successfully going downfield 
this time. And it's Hanlon who gets the ball to Woodson. He drives at the Bradford defence. But Heyman and Fairburn combine. Fuller this time gets the ball downfield. Goes to Simpson. Simpson a very dangerous runner from this position. Very strong, very elusive. Steps outside one and another. But Hanlon's the man there this time to bring him to ground. But that's just a small indication of Roger Simpson's prowess. Paul Round, one of the old campaigners, and although he won't like me to say that, but he's added some good experience to this Wakefield pack since his arrival from Oldham. And it's Fuller then. Passes on to Bagnell. Bagnell looks for Woods, the runner. And Woods it is that receives. And Fuller receives it and throws it through his legs. Basketball style, medal at Lemon would have been proud of that. And Spencer it is that gets the ball to Bell. So Wakefield Trinity again. Long ball to Forshaw. Forshaw, can he get it back inside? The answer's no. And Bradford Northern somehow managed to scramble onto the loose ball. So things are tight, things are tense. The score's only 8-7. Good tackling there. Nigel Bell gets a big round of applause from the Wakefield contingent. But it's Simpson then trying to come away. And he's tackled by Hanlon and Marlowe. And it's Trevor Clark gets the ball quite cheekily to Hamer. Hamer tackled by Mason. Mason did well there, the big lad of Hamer. Fox then, little inside ball, Watson strong here, he's gone straight through, he's got support, New Love, New Love's got Kebby, superb pass from New Love to Kebby, Kebby scores, midway between the posts and the touchline side there, it's the first time that New Love's been unleashed and he's been clear, professional play from Paul New Love there, Malcolm drew the full back well, had Kemmer on his outs, Kebby on his outside, and Kebby just went on a pause to the line. Yeah, the whole of that started really there, Derek Fox, and Dave Watson there strode through a gap a mile wide, and a good pass out then from Watson, New Love up in support, and yeah, good centre play, drawing the full back, and Kebby going over on a pause to uh, get Bradford Norton back into the lead. And... As Fox takes the kick, judges the win to perfection, And Bradford move to 13 points and Wakefield Trinity stay at eight. So it's been a game that's ebbed and flowed. It's gone from end to end. Both teams have enjoyed the lead. And this is the second time that Bradford Northern have been in the lead. Six points to two was the last time that they were there. And now 13 points to eight treatment has been received by John Hamer and Wakefield Trinity have made two substitutions Ian Marlowe and Nigel Bell have departed Adrian Flynn and Hugh Waddell have come on for Wakefield Adrian Flynn 18 years old he's been playing in the academy side and he gets his chance again and he'll play in the second row but Bradford from that try now full of confidence Derek Fox orchestrating from first man he will be the receiver here David Heron then takes the ball he moves and drives at the Wakefield defence and makes a good three or four valuable yards as Shelford moves into acting halfback Fox to Watson the playmaker there for that try of Bremer Kebby. As Simpson comes into the line for Bradford Northern, Watson then just steps over the Wakefield man and rather hurriedly tries to put the kick in. It's not always wise to make the kick from acting halfback. You get yourselves in all sorts of problems, but Watson gets away with that. Excuse me, a superb tackle there on Wilson by Summers. Wakefield Trinity have lost the plot a little bit just to say something that Stevenson says on Sky TV but Woods only half expecting that ball this time almost makes the half break Woodell then he'll had his weight 
to the Wakefield Trinity cause. And Bell and Bagnell combine, and Flynn's looking as the runner, and it goes back inside to Woods. And Bagnell will go to first man, we're on the fifth tackle. Will Wakefield opt to run it, or will they put the ball down deep? Hanlon's the man, little chip throw, the ball's on the deck, but Simpson seems to have it covered. Mason's the man who stops him from coming inside. The only way forward for him was on the outside and for sure. And Andrew Rowe were there to take him as Kebby, the try scorer, comes back in field and Andrew Rowe, his opposite number, takes him. This is the new lad, Winterburn. Strong drive for him. He'll just do the basics and try and grab some confidence from that in the early stages. The instructions, I'm sure, from Peter Fox will have been just play your normal game, don't do anything fancy. Fairbanks unleashed. Watson this time. Watson's looking for new love. But Hanlon was there to get the ball. Spencer gets the ball onto Andy Rohr, who comes back inside. But he's strongly met by Paul Newlove. Paul Newlove standing well over six foot. And he won't take any nonsense from Andrew Raw. And he put him straight down to ground as Woods gets the ball away to Richard Goddard. But Goddard in no position to make. If you watch that opening quarter in the first half, Watson and Summers did switch. Summers went to fullback and things were moving. And then, for some reason, they switched the whole thing back. And, uh, yeah, things, as you say, starting to tick again as... Um, Paul Newell of there, just got a bit of a crack on the head in that tackle, just receiving a bit of attention, but Bradford need to get a little bit more purpose back into the play again. Thanks very much, Malcolm, for those comments. Newell of then just coming back into the line as the ball comes over to his wing. Fox opts not to use him. The ball again carried by the wind over the dead ball line, so none of the tactical kickers this afternoon have been successful with the tactical kicks towards the corner as Nigel Bell puts Gary Spencer who for my money has had an absolutely superb game this afternoon took a lot of weight off his forwards, he's supported well and he's defended well when he's had to do as Paul Round comes on the inside Nigel Bell, Nigel Bell looks to offload to Richard Goddard Richard Goddard looking for Hanlon but saw that he, that he was in no position to receive the ball and Adrian Flynn then comes round to our commentary position but no way forward as the two ex Featherston men combine that's Fox and Newell to bring him to ground Hanlon shows the ball and then darts and waves no room for him Nigel Bell dummies with the long ball and tries to go forward and it looked for a second there as if he'd made the half -back, back break Bagnell then long ball to Wilson Wilson what will he do he'll come back inside he'll jink and he'll wave and he'll get the ball to round and Wakefield keeping the ball moving now and it's for sure going forward so some good interpassing by Wakefield Trinity this time but we're on the fifth tackle Wakefield Trinity through Wilson looking to Bagnell Bagnell looking to Goddard Goddard gets it back but Watson's the man who touches it so back to one and Bagnell will just go down and settle things but we have a touch to John the field did you see anything, Malcolm? No, I, 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 was, I was just watching there, Dave Watson still stood about, that, that ball. Tried to go over the top, and Watson touched it, referee giving it back to one, and it's Neil Summers who's been pulled out, so it looks like holding down, or probably, I don't know if he's rubbed the player's face in, in, into the ground, but uh, penalty to Wakefield, silly by Bradford. Yes, and Mr Alton there just indicated that it was a, a swinging punch there. By Summers on Bagnell as he was on the ground so Wakefield Trinity don't opt to go for the kick within the last 10 minutes a try and a conversion would seal the game for Wakefield Trinity I'm sure they'll be heading towards the post because it's difficult kicking conditions they won't want to score wide out then as Woods comes charging towards the line it's desperate stuff for Bradford Wakefield Trinity then through Bell acting half back then get round on the charge gets the ball away to Bagnell Bagnell stands D dummies and tries to go but Simpson's the man to smother him and Nigel Bell picked up the loose ball but unfortunately for Wakefield they've lost the ball so we'll come back to the 10 metre line and Bradford will get the head and feed but desperate stuff there 
from Bradford, but they held the line well, Malcolm. Yeah, and David Heron there, good, good loose forward play, settling the players down. They knew they were under a little bit of pressure there, but as we say, it's head and ball to Bradford, and Wakefield doing well there, but just unfortunate that pass going to uh, to ground from uh, from Bagnall. It's a little bit closer than I anticipated the game to be, but Fox, superb scrum half play there, good relieving run there, taking the pressure well off. And it's Simpson then, he's running forward, but Mason's checked, but he's had to come back inside, Simpson. And it was that man, Hanlon, who was also back to thwart the danger, but Bradford have come from their own 22, right up to Wakeful Trinity's 22, a stormy run by Fox in the first instance. Simpson then takes the game a little bit further towards the Wakefield line as Heron gets Winterburn through. Looks a strong lad, this Malcolm from Birkinshaw. Took two players there to pull him down. Suspiciously like holding down in the tackle from Woodell, but he gets away with it. Fairbank then comes forward. Wakefield Trinity can't afford to concede any more points. There's five points in it already. But Fox it is to Watson. Watson will come back, chips the ball through. But the old experience said of Woodell catches the ball, doesn't do anything silly, just goes down with it, secures the ball for Wakefield Trinity. As Flynn it is who tries to come away but New Love's on hand to take him, the pressure now, all on Wakefield Trinity, they've got to come the full 100 metres or so to score a try, to try and get anything out of this game, Andy Wilson then, on to Jeff Bagnell, playing football in their own 22, I feel that they've got to, got to throw a little bit of caution to the wind, we're probably entering the last five minutes of the game, Bagnell the little chip over the top, but Kebby with his exceptional pace, takes the ball, but Wilson comes from the other wing and bangs him down centre field. Fairbank then to Hamer. The game stepped up a gear. It's very exciting now. As Clark passes on to Dixon. Dixon then drives very, very hard. And the Bradford faithful encouraging their side as Winterburn, lovely little neat sidestep, comes and takes the ball to 12 metres short of the Wakefield Trinity line. Trevor Clark asking Mr. Ollerton to look at holding down in the tackle as Derek Fox, little sidestep, tries to jink his way through. We're on five tackles. Watson was the kicker last time. Who will be the kicker this time? He's opted to play the ball out wide. And it's Goddard who picks the ball up and he's got some strength and he's got some pace. What will he do? Steps inside, but there's no, there's no getting by Dave Heron this afternoon. Dave Heron's had an absolutely superb game and we can't can see him fulling the cross now as Mason takes the ball, drops Spencer off, not tackled, and Bagnell darts towards the Bradford cover as Woodell gets the ball away, basketball style, Bagnell it is that takes it, it's very effective, Flynn it is that chases it round, it's been indicated that a Bradford man touched the ball, it's back to one, Woods it is that charges through, ball goes out to round, round comes back this way, looks for the pass, Forshaw drops it, and Fox it is that grabs hold of it, so Wakefield Trinity playing catch-up rugby. And Derek, as far as I'm concerned, the Hooters, either my watch is wrong or something, but that's the final Hooter. Derek, just give us your final match analysis. Well, Br Bradford, not, not really as commanding in the second half as I thought we'd been. The, the, the kicking game didn't seem to come on, but it was that... Watson break, um, that the, the Nelby Rummer coming to get the try, that's got Bradford the two points, and uh, Peter Fox and Nigel Stevenson, I know their thoughts are that if Bradford win by one point, it's those two league points that are important, of course Bradford now four out of four, and uh, up at the top of the league there with Wigan. My sentiments entirely for any coach that uh, a win's a win, it doesn't matter how you win, Wakefield Trinity got their first win last week against Lee, but unfortunately today they've come off at the bad end of the stick. Bradford Northern, victors here then, 13 points to eight. I've enjoyed it. It's goodbye from me, David Wondless, and thanks very much to Malcolm Lane.